All right, people, it's May 28, 2017. I have a very good lesson here, again, in the New Testament is Fake series, and uh, it's called Born Again, and uh, this is dealing with the story with Jesus and the and Nicodemus, talking about being born again, going to your mother's womb and all that. So I'm going to read here from John chapter 3, a couple of verses, and show the, again, the trickery of the New Testament, because the New Testament has all these fancy things to try to get people to think that they should be believing in a rapture and flying up to heaven to go live in heaven forever and ever, even though the Moses says he's giving his people a certain land right here on earth. So nobody's going to live in heaven. And I see even the Hebrews are saying, well, we're going to have a thousand years first and then we go to heaven afterwards. All this strange kind of stuff that no Hebrew was believing until after the New Testament was made. The New Testament, of course, was made up later on. And uh, once they call it a New Testament to give it a trick name, then... You know, they had to call the other one something else, so they call it uh, an Old Testament. But the New Covenant uh, play in the whole idea of the New Testament. The New Covenant is in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 to 34. That's really telling us that the same covenant is what Israel's going to have. It's just going to be renewed. So if I look here now in John chapter 3, if you read the first couple of verses, he's talking about, hey, we know you are... We know you are, uh, you know, sent from the Father because nobody can do these miracles except the Most High be with Him. And uh, so the New Testament makes a blunder right there because, I mean, how can you be getting all this teaching from Jesus, who apparently they say was teaching Torah, and after all this time he's been teaching, he doesn't teach you that the same Torah says you shouldn't be judging a prophet by based on the miracles that he performs and the dreams and so on that he just comes and he tells you right away because it could be false, he could be fake. So you got to wait and test it out and see if it comes to pass. Then you know, okay, his word comes to pass, but if it doesn't come to pass, I haven't sent him. Anyway... In John chapter 3 and verse 4, it says, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? So I see the trick of the New Testament always wanting you to philosophize with these strange questions instead of asking questions that more lead toward wisdom if you search it out. Um... But they just want to philosophize a lot in the New Testament to get the mind to do endless wondering until you feel so mesmerized that you feel that the trick that's being played on the mind means that there is spirituality coming from the Father. But no. So it goes on in verse 5. Jesus answered. And so here the, the trick answer of Jesus. And of course, that means the trick answer from Yeshua, Yahweh Shai, Yasha, and all the other variants. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And remember, this lesson and these verses were read and taught and preached on so many times in the Christian church when I was growing up. But um, Hebrews don't seem to talk about it as much, like reading from these verses as much as in the Christian church, but they still believe it as well. So this is going for both the Hebrews and the Christians who believe in this so-called Messiah, 2,000-year-old Messiah, who is not sent from the Most High to redeem the Israelite. So he cannot redeem the Israelite, and he cannot redeem even Gentiles. He cannot redeem anyone. So he says, except you're born of the water and of the spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of the Mosai. Now, the trick too is that when you look at this word kingdom, they're trying to tell you quickly that 
uh, it's not really pointing towards a physical, literal kingdom, but it's more seeing dealing with the authority to operate a kingdom. Well, you're still going to be dealing with the physical kingdom because any any spiritual kingdom that you want to talk of, it's got to have its expression in the physical. So there must be a physical kingdom, such as the physical kingdom that the children of Israel had, and they lost. But we're going to get it back. So he says in verse 6, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. And so, you know, we know the New Testament talks about all that um, flesh and blood stuff, and, you know, flesh and blood cannot see the kingdom of God, cannot inherit the kingdom of God, and so on. But that is clearly not true. And if you're not born of the water and the spirit... That's really, really, really strange. Um, you know, and they try to reach back to tell you that, you know, no, and them even in the flood they were baptized. So as if they're trying to get you to think that the Hebrews were baptized. They didn't do all that baptism stuff. Like, come on, people. Now, later on, when they did some washing and so on, like with the Essenes and so on, they just got happy over the whole thing and wanted to do that physical ceremonial cleansing and so on. But it wasn't something that, as far as I found, the Hebrews were commanded to do under Moses or Abraham and so on, right? To go get baptized so that you know now you're a Hebrew Israelite and you are now a part of the kingdom of Israel. No. They had the law, studies, and commandments they were supposed to keep and so on. And they were born as the children of Israel. They were born Israelites. So, this whole water thing is strange, and you know, Noah, um, they were baptized in the flood that they taught us in the Christian church. Um, normally, what I know of baptism is that water, you go under the water, or as the Catholics do it, they sprinkle the water on you, like as the baby. Um, as far as I read in the Bible, Noah didn't have water sprinkled on him, and the people that were in the ark with him. So all eight of them. They didn't have the water sprinkled on them. They weren't getting wet. wet. They were protected. And they, they weren't baptized either. They weren't baptized. So if you think of baptism as immersion and going underneath the water, it seems to me like all the people on the earth outside, they were the ones who were baptized because they went under the water and they never came out alive. So their sins truly died with them. <laughs> yeah, they were all dead, right? So... If you're talking about baptism unto death, well, they really were baptized unto death. And Noah and the rest of them in the ark, they were the ones who lived because they weren't baptized. So baptism is the trick. Now, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Think of it, people. Flesh and blood cannot. Look here at... Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 and the and it says and Elohim formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul and every Hebrew I know who teaches in this who talks about this always talk about the most I the creator breathing in Torah into the man. So Adam being a type of Israel, he was created and wisdom was given to him. So basically the spirit was blown into him signifying that he came alive based on Torah. So he's born of spirit. So if Jesus is then t teaching Israelites when he was supposedly here 2000 years ago that they have to be born of water and spirit. I just covered the water part and showed that that's just fake, that's garbage. And he's saying you got to be born of the spirit, you have to be born again, making Nicodemus and the people around him feel like they weren't born again. And so now you get the understanding that this whole Pentecost, day of Pentecost outpouring, you're born of the spirit and so on, as well as the teachings of Jesus and so on, you're born of the spirit. But man was actually born of the spirit. At least Adam signifying um, as a, you know signifying Israel that he was born of the spirit for he Elohim breathed into him the spirit the breath of life and he became alive he came alive he became a living soul so for Yeshua to be bringing in some quote unquote new teaching that you have to that Israelites 
have to, in the Roman kingdom have to be born of the spirit is a strange kind of teaching from this particular demigod that as far as I'm concerned the other demigods didn't approach their messages bringing their messages across like that because we were just already born Israelites were just born of the spirit he showed his word unto Jacob so you come out of the womb born like that you got the spirit right and then the most I just simply says just grow them up grow up your children like that grow them up in that kind of way according to the teachings of the spirit or the teachings of Torah so we're born Israelites the reason why they indoctrinated us so that we don't know our identity is because they don't want us to know in our captivity that we are the people of the spirit that we are the people of Torah so they try to teach you in a different direction so that you never understand that but the spirit's already in you how is the most I going to gather us again in the last days like in Isaiah 11 11 and 12 and other such verses if we are not people of the spirit it's the spirit gathering this people of spirit is that the spirit is attracted to the spirit right and so he's just going to gather up the ones who were already born of spirit anyway because you are the people of the kingdom who were already born of the spirit because the spirit belongs in the kingdom and so the, the kingdom is both a spiritual race in your heart and so like I said he has put eternity in their hearts you've got the kingdom in your heart but the kingdom is also a physical place where you're going to get a land which most are already promised to our forefathers and to their descendants and that's us living now and the ones of us who have died who will come back again so to wrap it up here it's a strange teaching for Yahweh Shai to be talking about you got to be born of the water and the spirit and flesh and blood cannot inherit the king as if the Israelites that were there under Roman captivity and were scattered elsewhere were not already born of um, were not already meeting the requirements of um, flesh and blood and spirit they had flesh and blood because they were people if they were bleeding blood would come out so they they already had that I already told you already how the spirit part comes in that we're we're just Israelites, so the spirit of the word is in us. We are the children of spirit. He breathed into us the breath of life. Man became a living soul. And so if he breathed in Torah, then that spirit that he's breathing into us, we came alive by, by spirit. We came alive based on spirit. And so if that's talking about Israel, then if it's telling you that he made Israel and put the spirit by blowing the spirit into them, and Israel became alive or came um alive based on spirit or based on wisdom that means that anybody else who was alive didn't have wisdom so it must have been us that that was talking about then it seems right but knowing that he breathed into us the spirit already that spirit is taken care of the flesh and blood is pretty easy because if you look in the mirror you know you're looking at flesh and blood if you've ever had a cut you know you are flesh and blood and the children of Israel cannot be lacking in spirit because of what I just covered here in this video and they're not lacking in blood either because nobody's gonna live without blood the life of the flesh is in the blood so if Israelites were living they already had blood in them you see it sounds silly to you but I gotta break it down like this because you got even you got Christians who are well educated and university students and so on university and college professors and so on university professors and they are Christians and they can't understand certain things so you got to talk silly stuff like this which is really wisdom but you got to make it sound simple for them to see because sometimes even a university professor has to have his mind shaken and, and stunned in order to see what he is believing himself so Israelites had blood in them right Israelites had blood in them so what's this born again thing now they just need to return that's all the most I ever said return unto me return he didn't say, oh, you're dealing with your, your idols from the other nations. Go get baptized to come back to me. He says, no, just simply return. Return means if you are returning from somewhere that you went to, that means you are traveling again from that place and coming back to where you started from. So if they're returning from idol worship from the other nations, they are turning around and coming away or pulling away from the worship of idols that they learned from those other nations back to the Torah. That is what it means to return. 
He never told them to baptize in order to get that done or to baptize along the way while returning. Just simply return, change your heart and come back to what you were doing before. Which is keeping the, the commandments. Just return, that's it. No need to be you no know, baptized. So they had the flesh and the blood already, right? Now, remember when the Assyrians took Judah into captivity. We know right there showed that they really had flesh and blood because it tells us that the Assyrians put hooks in their jaws and led them away. That way, they're not going to retaliate and they're going to be very obedient and march and walk just as properly and carefully as the Assyrians wanted them to. I'm stuff flying around here something yeah so just as much as they wanted them to they're going to be very careful they're not going to be agitating too much because if they're pulling on that hook by trying to retaliate or fight back or something it's going to really rip their jaw out and whatever right and you know if you're putting hooks in people's jaw it's going to bleed so the israelites were bleeding and they put the hooks in their flesh and took them away they took the flesh and blood Israelites and pulled their flesh while their flesh was bleeding blood from the hooks and pulled their bleeding flesh while they walked on two feet and pulled them away from the kingdom that they already had and was inheriting because their flesh and blood was inheriting the kingdom already from way back then in so-called Old Testament times. But because of their transgressions, their flesh and blood was taken away from the kingdom that they were already inheriting and living in. And their flesh and blood was taken away, dripping all the way to the land of captivity them away from their kingdom so flesh and blood had already inherited the kingdom so when jesus is telling you flesh and blood cannot inherit it's a damn lie flesh and blood already inherited the kingdom it's just that we're in captivity now and we're gonna re-inherit according to the promise and the prophecies flesh and blood you don't need to be born again with all that new testament kind of instruction on how to be born again go baptize and get filled with the holy spirit and all that kind of stuff you already got it. Just find the commandments now. Return to it and uh, follow Torah. Read and study and learn Torah. And uh, that's how you need to do it. And so your flesh and blood is one day going to walk back into the physical kingdom. And your flesh and blood is going to inherit the kingdom when the Most High gathers back again. Gathers back his people again like he said he would. Your flesh and blood is going to inherit that without being baptized. And without being um, filled with no Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Born again, this is Yalak once again smashing the New Testament and this Jesus fake teaching. New Testament is fake.